Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict and welcome back to explaining Peaks Inside. In the last video we left off after the linear color calibration and the linear noise reduction. This single word linear is very important. Processing astrophotography images there are basically three main stages. The pre-processing, linear processing and non-linear processing. The difference is kinda big. The image you can see right here is still in the so-called linear state. Basically, if I would save this image now, we would only see this. All the pixels in this image are still behaving linear compared to the number of photons received. So see, only tag received a lot of photons. But the rest of the image, the histogram is so far to the left that we can't see anything. Some of these tools are better applied to linear images and some of these tools are applied to non-linear images. So Maybe in the middle of processing, the non-linear stretch is applied. And that's what this video today is about. From the entire series, it will probably be the shortest video, because I mainly only use two types of stretching methods, whatever works best. And it's not that hard to explain, and it is quite fast. So let's get right into it. The image is linear. I could, in Pixinside, use this preview stretch, and we can look at the horse hit right here. The background is still a bit uneven, but we can fix that later in processing. And the linear stretch is not that hard. The easiest way in Pixinsight to stretch the image is using the screen transfer function and the histogram transformation. So I'll, I'll bring this image back to linear without the preview and get out the screen transfer function tool and the histogram transformation. The image you can see right here, the nuclear symbol, is the same as I did right now. But you see that the screen transfer function has these settings now. It shows the settings which the program uses automatically, which it thinks is the best way to stretch this image. The pros of this tool, it's very fast and most of the times it's very good. But the cons, most of the time the star colors will be almost white. They will be saturated because there is no mask applied. And the next con is that the background mostly behaves pretty weird sometimes. You can still see that there is this gradient from right to left, which I was not able to get out in the background modelization. And we still have a slight yellow-brown color cast on the bottom left. The screen transfer function now has the settings. We can now take this little triangle here and drag it onto the bottom bar of the histogram transformation tool. Whoever thought of this not obvious way uh, you can now see the stretch that was automatically applied by Pixinside. I will now remove the preview stretch and apply the real one. This is basically the automatic histogram stretch by Pixinside. And you can see, if I undo this again, there is a small green bar at the left side here. This small green bar means that it's linear and preview stretched. If I now apply this transformation, you can see that the green bar is not there. This image is now non-linear. The pixels are no longer in the right comparison to the photons received, let's say. If I now click on the icon over there, we have the histogram where we can see it with our own eyes. Without this, the histogram would have been can we show it? Without this, look at this, the histogram is all the way over here. And this is not visible to our eyes. So apply, nuclear symbol, drag to the bottom bar, get rid of the preview and apply. This is the easiest and most of the time best way to stretch and picks inside. And if you want now, click the reset button again now we have the histogram on this image. We can maybe move in the blacks a little bit to make it darker, maybe get some more detail in by raising, by getting the midtones up. That's the basic steps in Pixel Side. But this, but this process no, is not the best for every type of image. I found that for the Whirlpool Galaxy and the Pinwheel Galaxy, 
I found that these objects with a compact area of brightness like galaxies and not nebulae which are expanded and are soft. Most of the time this stretch is not good for galaxies. There are multiple ways to stretch images in Pixinsight. For example, there's also the... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it in English. It's the uh, Arcus Sinus stretch. Well, this is the Sinus H. What's the Sinus Hyperbolicus? I think it's called the Arcus Sinus Hyperbolicus stretch. Tongue twister. I, you, I tried to use it sometimes. It did not really work. I need maybe to work with masks there. But the other stretching method I use in Pixinsight is the masked stretch. Let's get these tools out of the way. Undo this and get the mask, masked stretch up. Now the idea behind this stretching method. We can set the target background, iterations and the rest of the values. You can still see the background reference here. So if you kept from the previous video the background aggregated preview. You can use that here to get a better background, an even background, a dark background. And you can see the main setting here is, a, is the target background. If you increase this, the image will be stretched more and the background will be brighter. The idea behind this tool, it stretches the image a tiny bit. Iteration 1. Then it looks at the image and sees are there areas that are saturated or will be saturated very soon. If so, it applies a small mask to this iteration and iterate again and so on. Each iteration will be a new mask applied and therefore, for example with galaxies, nothing will blur out. For example, Alitek over here will most likely not blur that much. And when I mean blur, I mean saturate. I need to get used to that word. Alitech and the star over there in the top will not be saturated that much. And most importantly, which I like most, the background stays pretty even and noise free and the stars remain with their original colors most of the time, so which is amazing. So using this tool is not that hard, but it needs quite a lot of comparing before and after using many types, maybe maybe five tries to make it work right. So the target background is 0 0.1 to 5. In my opinion, most of the times too dark. I tend to increase it, but play around with the values and see what you like best. I'm going to increase it now to 2 point 0 0.25. I'm also going to get the histogram transformation tool up because it's going to need some applying afterwards. Remove the stretch and just see what the masked stretch is doing. This can take quite some time compared, it depends on the size of your image. And also found that using this on a small preview, of course, does not give the same result because the stretch is iterating and depends on the whole image. So I will just wait for this stretch right here and be right back. So as I said, the masked stretch was good for the galaxies in my opinion, but on nebulae uh, it depends, it really depends. But you can see this stretch was pretty pretty nice, the colors are nice, we can see a lot of nebulosity over here. And reset this, the histogram is stretched. Let's get this black a little in and stretch it a tiny bit more. Let's see. And you can see the background is pretty bright. Let's do that a tiny bit more. Well, you can see, now you can definitely see the gradient from right to left. As I said, the mask stretch worked well for galaxies. Actually, let me find the galaxy image. I'll be right back. And as you can see, the pinwheel galaxy right here, but this is the automatic stretch that would have been applied with the histogram transformation. And you can see there is no color in this galaxy. The stars are saturated almost everywhere and the background is annoyingly gray. Let's try that with the masked stretch. And here we go. Come on. All right, let's get the background 
dock. It's right about here. I remember why this is taking so long. This image is drizzled. So it's the scale is increased by two without without losing any most of the resolution because of the algorithm. Let's get the background even darker. That's why every process is taking so long on this image. But you can see the color is still there. The reds from the star forming regions are there. And if we now would now increase the saturation, we would see where is it? Why can't I find this all the time? I need to look for it so many times. You can see the blue is there, the red from the star forming region, regions is there, and if we increase the yellow a little bit, the beautiful white yellow tint of the center of the galaxy would be there. And also, look at the stars. The red is there, blue is there, yellow is there. Just thinking about how weird it would be to see green stars. Maybe the, this small explanation spiraled a bit out of control, but the masked stretch is in my case, I liked it on galaxies, it doesn't work well on the nebulae. But on the other hand, the histogram transformation works well on the nebulae, but not on the galaxies, because the colors are most of the time not that true to true to their true nature. Alright. So now with these two images, we could go to the next steps. And in the next video, I'll, I already have the process I can see because I wanted to use the color saturation. These steps are basically the final and most important and most fun part of at least my editing style. Because these are where we can get creative and form the image to our will. And this is where I, the quote I use in the video with the Whirlpool Galaxy that astrophotography bridges the gap between what we see and what we want to see. So this is what we see, but what we want to see will be after this editing a tiny bit different. And as long as we don't change that much, maybe as long as we don't remove stars purposefully or get tiny bits of the galaxy away that we think are annoying, it still stays true to their true nature, but we still can form these images a tiny bit how we want it, and that is amazing in my opinion. This was just a little detour. I will not use the masked stretch on the Horset Nebula. I will use the basic screen transfer function. And we can now work with this image right here. The next video will be my my version of the so-called five-way contrast, which I mentioned in a video I think half a year ago now, maybe e even a year ago which grew pretty popular. But you can see the tools on the right. We can now get creative and form the image to our will. And that's the topic for the next video. So if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and stay tuned for the next one. My name is Tim, I'm an astro addict. I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.